I'm John Janarone, Editor-in-Chief of IPO Edge. Very happy to be back at NASDAQ Market Site with Human Shahidi, who's a co-founder and CEO of EV Passport, one of the nation's leading EV charging networks. Human, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, um, so much to talk about. I, I got to start off, big capital raise last year, $200 million, which is really impressive in this climate. Tell us how you got it done and where you're going to put that money to help grow the business. Sure. Uh, well, it, it really starts with focusing on what we do well and making sure we're mastering that. I mean, we wanted to focus on a particular vertical, um, which is, you know, focused on infrastructure as a service and really deliver uh, a solution that had alignment of both what the capital markets were looking for and really what the sustainable markets were looking for. And for us, uh, we stuck to our guns, uh, so to speak, and, and made sure that we didn't deviate from the business plan and made sure that we weren't, uh, you know, going outside our, our, our focus and investment thesis. And as a result of it, uh, we were able to partner with Northleaf Capital Partners, who's a tremendous partner, uh, by the way. Uh, they've been you know, truly aligned with our values, aligned with our objectives, uh, and you know, they are really focused on making sure infrastructure as a service is coming to life. And we're targeting uh, tens of thousands of chargers uh, being deployed under our subscription model uh, across North America. Great, and uh, Human, let's step back for a second. You are not only the CEO of EV Passport, but you're also a member of the Zero Emission Transportation Association. Tell us what you see from that perspective going on in the industry. Yeah, it, it, that's a wonderful organization that's uh, you know led by uh, you know my friend uh, Al Gore Jr., who uh, who was actually previously at Tesla, but Al has done such an amazing job of aligning uh, really different companies really focused around the mobility future, especially when it comes to zero carbon emissions. And we've found it so rewarding to be a part of that organization, uh, not only because we get to learn from our peers in the space, but really understand how mobility plays a role in the way uh, you know the public is moving and, and how they're moving and why that plays a role and how we're able to create value. You know, the story is more than just creating sustainability efforts. It's around how do we create economic value? It's really around business value impact. Great. Um, if uh, you can tell me uh, a bit about how the EV industry obviously itself is impacting automakers, uh, charging networks, but what about the broader U.S. economy? Are there, are there ripple effects that we should talk about? Definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, so modern jobs are going to shift in a, in a positive way. Right? I mean, you know, take, you know, your mechanic, right? I mean, the, the mechanic is going to be a very different place as EV adoption and plug-in hybrid adoption continues to rise, right? Uh, you don't service your vehicles as much, right? But you might change your tires more often because there's more torque on those vehicles, right? I mean, so there's ancillary benefits, but there's also the connected world, right? I mean, we fundamentally believe having an open API is really, really important to the infrastructure of tomorrow, especially when it pertains to electric vehicle charging. So looking at it more holistically, uh, there's other jobs, uh, you know, but workforce is a big part of this entire equation, right? Now more than ever, we need more engineers, more uh, electricians. So it's an opportunity, by the way, for government to come in and actually invest in the labor markets of tomorrow in a way that, you know, positions our, ourselves in a, in a way that's uh, you know, creative, that's smart, that also enhancing our overall value. But uh, there's so much opportunity we had, especially with the advent of artificial intelligence, right? AI is going to play a big role in the way we look at dynamic load balancing to the grid um, and really looking at utilities and smart infrastructure. Great. Now, um, there's been a lot of talk about government supporting this industry and its growth. Tell us how the private and public sectors collaborate, work together. Right. I mean, this partnership uh, really is critical, right? Because at the end of the day, this is a moment where enablement is really front and center. Uh, you know, our, our lawmakers really need to continue to educate themselves on the topic. And I think overall, Washington thus far has done a great job of setting a great tempo of, of, uh, of that collaboration. But now we need to shift and, and reassess and say, okay, well, how do we collaborate further? Where are the blind spots? Where are the opportunities? But it is really, really important. I mean, the Inflation Reduction Act was a great step forward. The CHIPS Act was a great step forward. But really what needs to come you know, first now more than ever is that workforce, right? I mean, we, we continue to have a shortage, and if we're going to be able to be competitive, we need to make sure that we're, we're um, you know, collaborating closely with, with government. Beyond that, I also think you know, it's important to note that it's not just about red or blue or Democratic or Republican. I know EVs tend to be a political football in, in today's discussion with the election also coming up. But beyond that, we're noticing markets that are traditionally Republican, right? I mean, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, uh, Georgia are very heavily adopted EV states and great markets for us, uh, which continue to do well. 
Great, and um, you know, you explained the business model a little bit, but can you just dig in a little bit more and explain how you differentiate yourselves from other networks out there? Yeah, so we're really focused on infrastructure as a service. It's a full service turnkey solution for asset holders, where we remove completely all the barriers for EV adoption, right? So from the construction, the installation, the permitting, the hardware, the software, the operations, the maintenance, um, the connectivity, we actually you know, bring connectivity to you and make sure that you're really creating this full suite solution uh, but with also a revenue share. So we're, you know, there's total alignment of economic interest with asset holders and our customers have never been more diverse, uh, which is really, really exciting. I mean, we have over 500 enterprise customers uh, from Fairfield uh, to, to Nuveen, uh, to National Development, to just name a few. And, and we're excited about the, the ongoing diversification of our customers. Great, and uh, a related question, how do you plan to stay ahead of the competition? There's so many players in this space. Right, you know, innovation is, is, is a topic that's on every CEO's mind, but I think the sustainability field really uh, is doing a great job of aligning purpose with technology. This is a story really more, uh, you know, that is going to bring together product innovation and business innovation. And really it's around the workflow of that customer experience. How do you continue to be obsessive about your customers and deliver value at every touch point, right? For the asset holders, for the drivers, um, you know, and, and everybody else in between. For us, we need to be obsessive about that customer experience, and that's what has allowed us to differentiate. You know, something as simple as our 60-second heartbeat. Every 60 seconds, our entire network phones home to Los Angeles. And it's not because we miss those chargers, but it's an opportunity for us to take proactive maintenance and leverage machine learning to make sure that when you arrive at one of our stations, it is absolutely reliable, right? Unlike some of our peers uh, in this space. So as a result of it, we have a 99.7% uptime, uh, which is fantastic. Um, tell me this, and actually I'm gonna speak out loud. When I was buying a car recently, I thought, well, I might get an EV, but everybody says, you know, you can't go across the country, road trips are complicated. Is that the biggest problem facing EV networks, or is there something else you'd touch on? Range anxiety is unequivocally a challenge, right? I mean, people feel that, uh, you know, you could argue you could have secondhand range anxiety, your, your, your wife or partner, your spouse or whoever, uh, might feel that you might get stuck, right? And so th that worry is also out there. But yes, that is exactly why we exist at the same time. It's a massive and tremendous opportunity for us to build this necessary infrastructure. And you know, by the way, there needs to be over a million chargers deployed by 2030, right? I mean, which is such a, 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 a tremendous upside for everybody. Uh, and that will you know, curb range anxiety. Great, uh, all right, Human, last question. We are here at NASDAQ, so I've got to ask you, any plans to go public in the future? Share any thoughts you, you, you can. Yeah, I think for us, we want to make sure that we do what we do really, really well and make sure we deliver value for our customers. I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's no better reward than making sure our, our shareholders, our stakeholders privately are, are, are sat, satisfied with the work we do. Uh, if that happens to be in the public markets, no better place than the NASDAQ to do it. All right, well, Human Shahidi, thanks so much for joining us. This has been Human Shahidi, co-founder and CEO of EV Passport. I'm John Janarone, Editor-in-Chief of IPO Edge, signing off.